Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how I created this small painting or bookmark using uh, watercolor paints, paintbrush, micron pens, a, an alcohol ink marker for the border, and a white gel pen. So stay tuned. Hi everyone, Jeanette here with Beeble Vintage Designs. Today I wanted to do a combination watercolor and line art painting. And I'm going to try and keep it simple so that you can follow along. Um, I'm using very inexpensive watercolor paper because I was actually thinking of making some more bookmarks. I don't know why I'm so fascinated by these. These are um, These particular ones are alcohol ink paintings that I never did anything with and I just cut them. There are a few videos uh, in my playlist on the bookmarks. This was just one large painting that I did and uh, with the, with watercolor and then I just cut it into these bookmarks and these are my favorite. I love these. Even the back is painted. They're just so pretty. I love these and I always give them away as gifts as well but um, anyway so I have tons of bookmarks and I'm thinking about donating these to my library here in town so anyway I'm using this watercolor paper which will be listed in the description box below I can't remember exactly um, what the name of it is right now but I'll put the link down below as well as all the other products that you see me using so I'm going to wet down my paper and let's start right in the middle. I'm going to wet it down and again because this is very inexpensive watercolor paper it will dry very quickly so I'm putting a lot of water down there and then I'm going to load my brush with some color and I'm just going to, I'm going to need more color than that. So I'm going to load my brush up and just drop some color and let it do its thing and then I'll pick up another color and just drop it in there add a little bit of water because this dries so quickly I'm just gonna move it around help it out a little and there's diesel barking as always um, let's see, maybe a little orange down here. Okay, now I'm going to let this dry. Sorry about the barking. It's impossible to do a video without him barking. And then I'm just going to run some lines down here, I don't know. Just to add some texture. Okay, so now I'm just going to dry this real quick and I'm going to be using my dryer. So let me do that so the noise doesn't bother you and I'll be right back. Okay, um, the paper is mostly dry and I'm going to cut out, you know, most of this. So disregard the edges. I don't really care so much about that. And now I'm going to take a micron pen and I'm going to draw a flower. And let me see if I can bring you closer so that you can really get a good view of what I'm doing here. Just bear with me one moment. Okay, so I want to do a kind of like a daisy. So I'm going to start with the um, center of my daisy. And you can see I'm using a very light touch. And just basically drawing some squiggly lines. And I, I don't know why, but I always prefer the sun coming from the left hand top side. So I'm going to create some shadow by just squiggling my micron pen on this end where my shadow is. 
And as I get closer to the top in this area here, my dots or squiggles will be less and further apart. But where I want it, <clears throat> the shadow, it's going to be darkest. As you can see, there's nothing difficult about this, just dots and squigglies. And now I'm going to start doing my petals. <clears throat> and I'm not using a pencil to draw this out first. I'm just going to do it freehand. And really, there's no right or wrong way to do this. So just start drawing your petals. And you can see I'm using very light touch and squiggly petals. I'm not doing anything perfect here. Some are overlapping others, and then I'll come in between and do some. The tips are all shaped differently. I'm not going to get too crazy, but I will add a few in here. And then I'll leave it like that, and then I'll come in and do some more line work. So now I want my stem to come from the center, so I'm going to come down. And do my stem. I'm going to make a pretty thick stem. Okay, now these areas down in between here, I'm going to fill those in a little bit and maybe even darken some of my lines. Again, they're still sketchy, but I want to kind of create a shadow on the petals that are overlapping others. So that's where I'm thickening my lines a little bit. So if you can draw a line, you can certainly do this. And again, I'm trying to keep this very simple so that you can follow along and give it a try. And by the way, this, um, this micron pen that I'm using is a 0 0.3 or a 0.35. So you see this petal here is underneath this one, so I want to thicken up that line a little bit just so that it looks kind of like a shadow. And I think I want to darken it up a little bit more over here. And 
and now I'm going to switch to a smaller tip. It's a 0.15. This one. This is a 005 or a 0 0.20. And the reason I'm switching to a smaller one is because now I'm going to create some lines or hash marks to um, create some shadow and some texture in my petals. So when you're doing this, you should really, um, for instance, if this is your petal, okay, come from the point and swipe down real quick or from the base of the petal and come up because that way instead of getting a line that's blunt at both ends you get it's thicker at the bottom and it narrows tapers at the tip so when you're doing this it creates a much nicer effect but don't go from here and go up because that's not the, the look you want. So you want to start at your edge or the base of the petal and do your lines. Or if you're doing them from the tip of the petal, start there and come down. So just don't do straight lines like this because they're blunt at either end and that's not the effect you want. You want it to be thicker at where you start it and then narrow as it goes up. Okay. So I'm going to start doing my lines and um, when you're doing these, be sure to follow the shape of your petal. That's really important. And you can make them in different sizes. You can even uh, dot some. They don't all have to be straight. You can just add some dots and it really creates some nice shadow and texture for your petals. So this one, because it's underneath, I want to create a little bit more shadow. So I'm going to be a little heavier with my lines. And again, I'm going to turn my paper because I want to make sure that I go with the direction of the petal. And this one again is underneath. So I'm going to be a little heavier with those lines because I want it to look like it's in shadow. And then I'll just do a few at the tip. See how I'm, I don't know what you would call this, but I'm jerking my hand so that my lines go with the direction of the petal. And don't make all your lines the same size. Change it up a little bit. So again, this one is underneath, so I want my lines to be a little darker, so I'm using a little bit more pressure. This one's underneath.
and make sure that your when you start your line that it's actually on the line of the petal. Don't start it halfway up. Um, in other words, so this is your petal here. Don't start your line here. You want to make sure that you're on that line and then go up. You don't want to be making petals. You don't want to start your lines rather um, in the middle of the petal. That doesn't look right. Also, this water paper, uh, watercolor paper that I'm using doesn't have a lot of texture. This is Arches um, watercolor paper and it does have a lot of texture. I don't recommend using your Micron pens on, on good quality watercolor paper because it can ruin your tips. It's very textured, but this is very smooth. So it's um, fine to draw on this with your markers. Okay, so this one is underneath here. I'm going to be a little darker with my lines. And if it helps you to turn your paper to get your lines the way you need them, don't be afraid to turn your paper. That's fine. Okay. So I think that's pretty much done there. I don't need much more detail than that. And now to do my stem, because underneath the flower, if the sun is coming from this direction, there's really no light hitting the stem. So I'm going to darken that area up. And as I come down, I'm going to keep one side of my stem darker than the other. But again, I'm doing sketchy lines to fill in my stem. Thicken it up a little bit too. Got a little narrow here at the bottom. And you can add a couple of little lines. But don't forget that the light is coming from this side, so just keep it a little bit lighter on the opposite side. And then I am going to. If I can find my white gel pen, and I don't know why I constantly lose this pen. I'll be right back. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I found it. So let me move you over a little bit and bring you a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I am going to use my white gel pen to add a little bit of highlights. And I didn't use a lot of line work. I kept it pretty simple. But now I'm just going to, um, oh, by the way, this is a Uniball, what's it say? A Uniball Signo Broad White Gel Pen. So let me get my ink flowing here. And I'm just gonna put some squigglies, some lines here where I want the light to be hitting and I'll add some high, white highlights and like I said I didn't make this too crazy so it's not like I need to add a lot of highlights but um, you do want them where the light is hitting the flower you don't have to add too many but just a few little highlights here and there will really make it pop. And I'm even going to add a few on my stem. And you can see, very simple, I'm just little sketchy lines. And that's it. 
Very simple, very pretty. And it makes a really nice bookmark. You can actually even cut this out um, and frame it. It's so pretty and so simple. And it only took 20 minutes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions regarding anything you've seen me do here, leave your questions in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And don't forget to check out that description box for the products used and all the links. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.